Welcome back to Facet Net. Today, I'm going to talk to you about configuring and managing virtual switches. Past couple of videos, I have showed you guys how to create virtual machines using ESXi, then installing ESXi, installing vCenter servers, and then doing vMotion migrations. All these things we have done as a practical task. But I've seen a couple of comments and a couple of messages I was going through and they ask about the virtual networks. So in this one, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about virtual networks. So what is a virtual network? In real world, when you have multiple devices, when you connect all those devices together, it creates and it forms a network. Network is connecting more than two devices together is a network. But with the virtual environment, there is no multiple physical devices. It's all virtual devices. So there is no way that we can have multiple cables or physical cables running across multiple devices. So here we have to create everything virtually. So in a single host, in a single physical machine, we will have uh, internal networks. So this is called virtual network. It's exactly like a physical Ethernet counterpart. A standard switch and a standard devices and cables, they are all interconnected. In virtual networks, I'm going to do the same thing. So to create the virtual networks, VMware supports a virtual switches. Right? So we're going to talk about a virtual switches mainly here in this virtual network. So what is a virtual switch? Virtual switch is a layer 2 a device, it's a virtual device, it does forward frames to other switches or the switch ports based on the MAC addresses and also it supports the features such as VLAN and port channels. A standard switch have to be connected to the ESXi host physical network adapter. So the ESXi server's physical network adapter is what we call it as these uplink ports. So these uplink ports communicate with the rest of the network. Right? So they are configured at the host level, meaning that you must create and, a, and manage vSphere standard switches independently on each and every host machines. Right? So by default, when you install and configure a ESXi host that comes with one virtual switch, we call it as vSwitch0. Right? So the standard switch provides network connectivity between virtual machines. Right? So if I go in a standard switch, the standard switch has a specific connection type. Mainly, you can see virtual machine port groups, VM kernel port, and then uplink ports. So I spoke about uplink port. Uplink ports are the ports those are connected to the physical networks. So what is a virtual machine port group? Virtual machine port group is a virtual switch grouping, port groupings. So when you create a virtual machine, you can have a maximum of 1060, 1016 active ports per host, right? So you can have 1016 active ports per host. And also you can have a total of 4096 standard switch ports per host, which means, and also we have 512 port groups per switch. So if you create a switch, you can have 512 port groups. So these 512 port groups, we can closely match to a VLAN concept. When you have a physical switch, you can manage the switch ports like as a grouping of ports by creating VLANs and then tacking those packets. So, well, tacking those frames, we don't call packets here. Technically in layer two, we call them as frames. So the same way, in a virtual switch, we can create 512 port groups, 
right so each port groups will have multiple virtual network adapters so here you can see these are virtual network adapters every adapters are called virtual adapters so the virtual machines which are connected to the virtual adapters on a specific port groups they can communicate between themselves without any problems right so virtual machines within the same EXX5 host can communicate using standard switch and virtual machine on a different host also can communicate using the standard switch which means the standard virtual switch will communicate with the uplink uplink will go to the physical adapter the physical adapter will be connected to the next host machines virtual uplink and then that uplink would be connected to the virtual switch that way we can just create the communication so port group is a grouping of virtual network interface cards then we have vm kernel port vm kernel port is a grouping of again it's a port that specially designed to manage the host machine especially when it comes to the esxi host if you need to access the esxi host for example to access the vSphere interface or to do a virtual machine migration we call it as a vmotion migrations so you have two host machines running esxi and you need to migrate one host machine from the host one to the other host without shutting it down or disturbing to any services running on that virtual machine so we have to migrate them while the services are running on that machine which we call it as vmotion so vm kernel ports support vmotion on top of that it supports and facilitate fault tolerance it does help you to configure replication and also it helps you to configure ip storages so that's called kernel port so the kernel port name itself tells you it's to manage the physical machines the kernel right kernel is what the operating system so it does help to do that so we have three different types of connection virtual machine port groups vm kernel port and then uplink port so this gives you an idea of a virtual switch so as i explained in my last slide a virtual switch can have multiple port groups so you can have one virtual switch and that one virtual switch can have multiple uh, port groups or you can create multiple virtual switch and then have a single port groups on each virtual switch so you can create multiple port groups and then attach those multiple ports groups to one virtual switch or you can create one port group and then attach to a one virtual switch so that's what it says more than one network can coexist on the same virtual switch here you can see test dev production management vSphere and iSCSI these are different networks they all exist on a physical on a virtual switch here a single virtual switch or network can also exist on a separate virtual switch here we can see the same networks exist on a specific separate virtual switches so we can create virtual switch as a single virtual switch or we can create multiple virtual switch this gives you a standard virtual switch idea a standard virtual switch provides connections for the virtual machines to communicate with one and the other one right so when you create multiple virtual machines and if you put those virtual machines into the same kernel port and the kernel port is connected to the virtual switch so now this standard virtual switch helps you to communicate those virtual machines whether they are on the same host machine or they are on a different host machine right it doesn't matter those virtual machines are on the same machine or on a different host machine as long as they belong to the same port group and the same virtual switch then they can communicate which is exactly same as having a vlan so when you have vlans on two separate devices or two separate switches and the machines which are connected to those specific vlans can still communicate through the trunk port when you connect both switches together it must have a trunk port the trunk port will carry all the tact packet so the end device doesn't know anything about the vlan information they just produce the standard frames and then it goes to the switch switch at the vlan tagging 
and based on the VLAN tagging, we will communicate them to the uh, trunk interface or we will forward them to the trunk interface. Trunk interface will forward to the next switch and the next switch will forward to the specific VLAN interface and before it leaves the switch interface that will remove the VLAN tagging and send it to the end device as a standard 802.3 Ethernet frame. So the same system is applied here using the virtual switches. So a standard switch can be used to communicate between virtual machines within the same host or can be used to communicate between the virtual machines on a different host machines or it could be used to communicate between virtual and physical machines on the same network. How does it communicate with the virtual and physical? It's because the virtual network or virtual switch is connected to an uplink. Uplink is connected to the physical network. So now there is a communication. As I said in my previous one, you can have total of 4096 standard switch ports per host with a maximum of 1016 active ports per host and 512 ports groups per switch. So in a single virtual switch, you can have 512 port groups, which is a big number. So when I say virtual switch, there are two different types of virtual switch available. We talk about the standard switch and there is another one called distributed switch. Distributed switch is like quite similar to a layer three switch. I'm not going to compare with layer three switch, but to just differentiate layer two and layer three switches. Similarly, I'm trying to differentiate the standard and distributed switch. Standard switch belongs to one host. Distributed switch, you need to have a vCenter server to create it, which means when you have multiple host machines, if you want to then manage all those multiple host machines, then you need to install vCenter server. So if you have a vCenter server, then you can create a distributed switch. So it's a virtual switch configured for an entire data center. When you say the entire data center, which means the data center is going to have multiple host machines and I'm going to manage those multiple host machines using this virtual switch. And this can support up to 2000 hosts can be attached, right? So in a distributed switch, you can have up to 2000 hosts, right? It consistent, the, the distributed switches has consistent configuration across all the attached hosts, right? So you can have up to 2000 hosts, right? So this gives you a diagram of a distributed switch. You can see there's a host one. Here we have a host two. These two hosts, they don't have their own virtual switches instead of they have a distributed switch. Of course, you can create virtual switch. Of course, there's going to be a hidden virtual switch, right? These hidden virtual switches are going to communicate with the distributed switch. So this distributed switch is belongs to host one and also it belongs to host two, right? So instead of having the switches inside the host machine, I'm going to have it outside the host machines. That's called a distributed switch. So let's see the difference between standard and distributed switch. They both support layer two. They both support VLAN segmentation. They both support IPv6, 802.1Q. Of course, if you have a VLAN, then it must support 802.1Q. We can do NIC teaming. And they both support the outbound traffic shipping. But inbound traffic shipping, VM network port, private VLAN, load balancing, uh, load bal based teaming, right? Data center level management, all these options are not supported by the standard switch. So distributed switch has got more features and it can do more work compared to a standard switch because it's a local. This is like a foreign thing. So with this, you can understand on a VMware network, we can create virtual switches, all right? Virtual switches will provide a communication and connectivity between the virtual machines, right? So the virtual switch has got two different types. One is called the standard switch. The other one is called distributed switch. The standard switch are pretty much similar to a network switch that connects multiple devices. 
A distributed switch is a switch that sits upper level or above the normal switches. Hope this clears you some of the concepts of virtualization. So what we do after this, since I'm talking to, I've spoken to you about the virtual network, I'm going to do a practical to explain you how to create the standard switches on a virtual environment. So stay tuned. I will release another video and I'll explain you how to create a standard switch with the virtual machine port group. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned with us. Subscribe to FaceItNet and I'll make sure I'll release some more interesting videos and uh, configurations. Thank you.